your energy factories are under attack by things in your kitchen, your car, and even your soap. If you're tired, foggy, or stuck with stubborn fat despite effort, today we're going root cause and mitochondrial. I'm revealing seven everyday toxins that quietly damages your mitochondria, explaining how they do it, and giving you simple swaps to protect your ATP. And stay to the end for a myth buster that flips detox on its head. Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Hampton, board certified in family and obesity medicine, but it was my master's in nutrition and functional medicine that I received from the University of Western States that helped me think outside the box and the way I do now, because they taught me how to heal from the root and to not just manage my patient's diseases with medication. And before we begin, I'm curious, does your doctor focus on helping you heal from the root cause? Share your thoughts in the comments. All right, here's my fast mitochondrial 101. Think of mitochondria as high performance engines turning oxygen and food into ATP, the energy you spend on thinking, moving, and burning fat. When the engines run clean, electrons flow down the electron transport chain like cars on a smooth highway. But when they're gunked up or overheated, electrons leak, reactive oxygen species spark, and power drops. Less ATP means more fatigue, more cravings, and a metabolism that acts like it's stuck in traffic. So let's talk about the toxins that negatively affect your mitochondria. Toxin one, oxidized cooking oils, especially reheated seed oils. If your pan is smoking, your mitochondria may be coughing. High PUFA oils oxidize into aldehydes that embed in membranes and damage cardiolipin, the special fat that stabilizes the inner mitochondrial membrane. Once cardiolipin is oxidized, complex one and two leak electrons like a frayed extension cord, spiking oxidative stress and lowering ATP. You feel it as post-meal crash and brain fog. You fix it with my Boca rule, butter, olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, and use beef tallow, lard, or ghee for higher heat. Keep the flame reasonable. If oil smokes, start over. At restaurants, go grilled or roasted and ask, do you have alternative oils instead of the seed oils? Especially if you enjoy restaurants regularly. You'll hear yes more than you think. Toxin two, sugar, especially liquid fructose from sodas, energy drinks, and even those halo glowing green juices. Fructose heads straight to the liver, cranks up uric acid, and drives de novo lipogenesis, making fat that crowds the liver. That fatty liver resists insulin and dumps high NADH load into mitochondria. The electron chain backs up, leaks more electrons, and creates more oxidative stress. Translation, afternoon crash, cravings, and creeping waistline. First one, eliminate liquid sugar. Swap in sparkling water, black coffee, or unsweetened tea. And if you're not a carnivore like me, and you want fruit periodically, keep it to a handful of berries with a protein forward meal so glucose arrives with a chaperone. Quick favor, if content like this helps you solve real problems, tap like so this message reaches more people. And subscribe if you want low carb, keto, and carnivore friendly videos grounded in root cause medicine. It truly supports the channel so that more people can hear this message. Toxin three, alcohol, especially the nightly pour that becomes two. Your liver turns ethanol into acetaldehyde, highly reactive, and the process floods the system with NADH. Now you've got an electron traffic jam and impaired fat oxidation for hours. Alcohol also dings PGC1 alpha, the signal to build new healthy mitochondria. So repair slows while damage speeds up. If you drink, keep it smaller, earlier, and with a real meal. Schedule alcohol light weeks. People are shocked how quietly sleep quality, heart rate variability, and morning energy improve. Toxin four, plastics and endocrine disruptors. BPA, BHA, and phthalates. These leach from heated plastics, some personal care products, and even receipts. They can uncouple the mitochondria membrane potential, inhibit key enzymes in the electron transport chain, and tinker with nuclear mitochondrial signaling by lowering SIRT1 and SIRT3 activity, the enzymes that help restore order after stress. You feel that as hormonal weirdness, water retention, and plateaus that don't match your effort. Simple rule, heat should never meet plastic. Use glass or stainless for hot food. Never microwave in plastic. And carry a stainless or a glass bottle. Choose 
Phthalate free personal care and skip handling receipts when you can. Toxin 5. Dirty air and indoor VOCs, which are volatile organic compounds. Yes, the candle meant to calm you can steal your ATP. Fine particulate matter, PM 2.5, rides into lungs and bloodstream, triggers lipid peroxidation, and hammers mitochondria directly. Volatile organic compounds from air fresheners, cleaning sprays, paints, and poorly vented gas stoves impair complex one and three, increase electron leak and stoke inflammation. Symptoms, headaches, brain fog, and lower exercise tolerance for no obvious reason. Solutions, run your vent hood whenever you cook, crack a window when the weather allows, use a HEPA purifier where you sleep, and choose low VOC cleaners and paints, and ditch synthetic fragrances for fragrance-free options if you're sensitive. Think of it as putting clean air in the tires of your metabolism. Toxin 6, chronic sleep loss and late night blue light. The silent circadian toxin. Melatonin isn't just a sleep hormone. It's a mitochondrial antioxidant that protects the electron transport chain. Light at 10 p.m. suppresses melatonin, blunts AMPK, and PGC-1 alpha, the signals to repair and rebuild new mitochondria, and impairs mitophagy, the nightly trash pickup of damaged engines. A few late nights turns into cravings, insulin resistance, and slower recovery. The fix is boring and powerful. Dim lights after sunset. Use screen filters. Aim for a consistent bed and wake times. And get morning light to anchor your clock. Cut caffeine in the afternoon. And front load water earlier so you're not up at 2 a.m. meeting your toilet more than your pillow. Toxin 7. Excessive cleaners who tend to over sanitize with strong disinfectants and quaternary ammonia compounds. These can disrupt mitochondria membranes and enzymes, and frequent use shifts your indoor microbiome, the friendly ecosystem that crosstalks with the immune system, and yes, mitochondria. If a cleaning spree ends with a headache or a chemical taste, your body's asking for a timeout. So keep those heavy hitters for actual messes. Daily life, soap and water, diluted vinegar, and gentle surfactants go far. When you need stronger products, glove up and ventilate. Who's most vulnerable? people with insulin resistance, fatty liver problems, autoimmune flares, thyroid slowdown, chronic fatigue, post-viral syndromes, and kids with developing systems. The hopeful truth, lowering exposure raises ATP. You'll feel it. A quick story. I had a patient, we'll call her Joanna, who ate healthy, but lunch came from a nonstick pan. Afternoons included a green juice, and nights ended with a candle, a glass of wine, and a scroll. We swapped the nonstick coatings pan for stainless steel, the juice for sparkling water, glass containers for reheating, and the bedtime foam for a paperback book. Two weeks later, Doc, I didn't know energy could feel like this. Same person, different mitochondrial load. Here's how to mito-proof your day starting tomorrow. Breakfast, protein forward, eggs and sausage, Greek yogurt if you tolerate dairy, or steak and eggs if you're kind of leaning. No juice. If you want sweetness, a few berries with a meal. Cooking, bokeh or tallow and ghee. Or if oil smokes, you overheated the pan. Storage and reheating. Glass or stainless, not plastic. Hydration, front load water earlier so sleep wins. Home air, vent when cooking. Open windows for fresh cycles and run a HEPA purifier in the bedroom. Light, dim after sunset and get the morning sunlight. Cleaning, keep it simple and ventilate when you go stronger. Movement snacks, 10 minutes of walking after meals. AMPK loves that routine. On low carb or carnivore, keep electrolytes up. Sodium, potassium, and magnesium are cofactors for mitochondrial enzymes. Now the myth buster. Your mitochondria don't want a juice cleanse. They want capacity. Lower daily hits and add smart hormesis. Brief micro stresses that make the system stronger. Brisk walks, resistance training, a 30 second cold rinse at the end of your shower, or a sauna if you have access. These upregulate PGC1-alpha, increase mitophagy, and activate your own antioxidant defenses. It's like upgrading the pit crew and the engine at the same time. If this feels like a lot, choose one lane this week. Maybe it's switching cooking fats and refusing smoky pans. Maybe it's an alcohol light week. Maybe it's a plastic break. Glass for hot food and stainless for water. Momentum beats perfection every time. People ask, do I need supplements for mitochondria? Food, light, sleep, movement, and stress control 
are the big levers. Then we personalize magnesium, adequate protein for repair, targeted nutrients based on your labs, but no supplement outruns a smoky fryer a nightly sugar drink, or blue light at midnight. So if this helped, hit like so more folks can find it. Tell me in the comments which mitotoxin you're tackling first and where you're watching from. Subscribe for more low-carb, keto, and carnivore-friendly deep dives that treat the cause, not just the symptom. Educational notes so my lawyer sleeps at night. This is education, not medical advice. Don't change prescribed medications without talking to your clinician. I'm your YouTube doc, not your personal doc. Your next step, click the playlist in the description for my metabolic health deep dives. Start with the video right here or subscribe to my channel right here. Protect your mitochondria and your mitochondria will protect you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.